Another way to create an observable is to call the static method named create on the observable class. This method accepts a lambda, a lambda that takes an i observer of t of the same t's that we want the i observable to be created of and returns an i disposable. In passing this lambda to the create method, we are really saying to it, please create an i observable of t for us. But don't run this lambda just yet. For now, please return to us any class that implements the i observable of t interface and caches this lambda in a private field. And then, when we call the subscribe method on the i observable of t that you return to us, oh dear create method, we request you to please run this lambda then, that is, upon the call to the subscribe method. And please return to us the i disposable that this lambda returns to you then. So in effect, we are taking control of what happens inside the subscribe method of the observable we are requesting the create method to create. So I could simply for now pass in a lambda that does nothing but prints something to the console window and returns a simple i disposable implementation I will create. Or actually don't even have to do that. I don't have to create a class that implements i disposable that doesn't mean anything. Rx already does that for us. There's a class named disposable that has a static property named empty, which does exactly what we are after. It creates a disposable that has nothing expensive to dispose and whose dispose method does nothing. That is, the dispose method has an empty body. If I ran this bit of code, we'll see nothing happen except our message being printed on the console when we call the subscribe method. The key to note here is that we're really defining what happens when we call subscribe on the created observable. Now let's make the code a bit more useful. In the subscribe method, we know that an observable is supposed to produce values and notify its observers of those values. So, in the lambda, we're supposed to do just that. We have an observer, and for every call to the subscribe method, a new instance of the i observer of t is created by rx, and it is passed to our lambda. So, in the body of this lambda, we'll just issue an on next notification, or as many on next notifications as we want, to the observer. And if we have a criteria for completion, we'll issue an on-completed notification as well. And if there are errors, it's our duty to propagate them to the observers. So we'll just wrap the whole thing around in a try-catch block and propagate errors via the on-error notification. If we don't have errors, we'll get the three values and then an uncompleted notification when we run this code. Now let me modify the program to raise an exception. And when you run this code now, we get the three values followed by an on error notification. Please also note that the observer in this case is safe. It's created by the Rx framework because we call the overload of subscribe that accepts the three lambdas. That creates a safe observer for us as we've previously discussed. Now the trouble with this code is that it evaluates the observable before returning the subscription. In other words, it blocks. So, just like in the example where we implemented an i observable of t implementation, this implementation will also return to its observer, the subscription, 
when all the values have already been pushed to the observer. By then, it's too late for the observer to do anything useful with the subscription other than to dispose it. This gives the observer no chance to cancel an observation while it is still in progress. To test that, let's put a console.writeLine statement after we subscribe, where we'll just say that we're disposing the subscription, and then we'll dispose the subscription in the following line. Let's run this, and we see that all the values were received, and the completion message also printed. And then our message about the subscription going to be disposed got displayed. So this blocked the current thread. Of course, like in the previous example where we implemented a custom iObservable of t, here also we can create a non-blocking implementation by using a timer. Let's do that. But as stated in the previous example where we created our own iObservable of t implementation, this imposes concurrency on observers, which isn't a good thing. So a better implementation is to use one or more of the inbuilt operators provided by Rx to introduce lazy evaluation of this observable sequence without blocking the current thread and without imposing any kind of concurrency on the client. Because as we'll see later, the client code can dictate concurrency to observables.